Well, lots of big moments. I mean, there's so much to try and package into a short post-show here. Uh, let's talk about Gabriel Medina. How can we not, as he started visiting those 10-point numbers again, Pete? Well, both of his heats today, he looked the informed surfer. Um, he was explosive. He was creative. He was uh, exciting. He had the beach losing their minds with moves like this. I mean, how is the transition straight into a bottom turn after a full rotating three? I mean, that's as good as it gets. Well, that's why the 10 flew. I mean, it was pretty quick. There was three right off the bat. The other two took their time, and then they dropped him in. You know, he, it's just, you don't do that. You come out of an air like that, you like throw the claim already. He went straight into a bottom turn and smacked it again. Like, I'm not done yet. And I feel like that's the exact attitude he's got for the rest of this event wow. because he's so pumped up. He's very calm and collective right over here when you do his posty interviews, but he is just psyching. You can see it in his eyes. He's got, it's a whole new Gabriel at this event, and I love it. I love to see the fact that we're seeing him fire back into where he needs to be. And especially with Felipe and Italo bowing out here, those were the two informed Brazilians now being the, pretty much one of the lone exciting Brazilians that could go on to win this one. Well, don't forget about Adriano de Souza. No, I know. About, uh, of ADS course. is an animal, dude. That guy <laughs> will do anything to win. I guess We've in, seen that. in regards to the to the air game, you know, you, you would put those guys in there. But Adriano, yeah. you're right, is an animal, and uh, he will win every heat that he wants to get into. So many subplots to uh, discuss here on a big day in uh, Rio de Janeiro. What about uh, the focus shifting onto Sebastian Zietz, a possible taking the yellow jersey, squished out uh, in that uh, round, uh, round three heat cap? There was only two surfers yeah. that were no. able to do that. That was Italo and... and uh, Sebastian Dietz and they're both out, um, you know, crushing blow here. You know, he's been so good uh, as of late. He was actually surfing really well in this heat. You know, it was unfortunate because he really did. He surfed a great heat. This man, you know, kind of kicked out right there, which we thought might have been a mistake. He was, you know, look at Seabass, nice and freed up, throwing the tail around, looking really good, right until literally the dying two seconds, seconds yeah. of the heat you know look at him i mean he's feeling good he's going left he's going right he's got you know a couple of, of moves he's actually fabricating scores off the inside a little you know throwing the tail around right there he's doing what he needed right here in the last two seconds of the heat this man catches a wave but executes that's tough to do you know especially with that much pressure he would have been hearing the beach commentary counting it down you stand up and you know you need a 5.64 it's not like it's a big score either, so it was something where he just, uh, and he got the bonus section on the inside, and at this point he's feeling pretty confident that he would have gotten the score, a little fist pump, a little hand clap, and uh, he ends up getting that win, so Adam Melling uh, making it through. Well, Adam Melling surprising us all here with a great comeback story. Sebastian Zietz gets blotted out of the discussion, and uh, with that, uh, talking about the numbers with Crunch It, we're going to have a look at uh, the top 10 standings coming into Rio de Janeiro. Gentlemen, none of them are left. They've all been obliterated. <laughs> Who's writing the statistics here? It's absolutely crazy. It's and uh, well, let's have a look at that top 10 ladder there. They've all been blotted out. It's the theme of the year. It really is. I mean, we, we have seen a mix-up completely from the very first get-go through each and every event. We've had new winners. We've had new looks, new faces, new performances. And it's not, how, it's not changing at all coming into Brazil. No. I, I just, you know, you look at that. Every one of those guys are gone. The reality is this year, how it started, the way it's rolled out, it's basically been turned upside down. You know, nobody would have thought Wilco was going to win two events. There's no, nobody thought Seabass would have come to Western Australia and won an event. And now all of these guys are gone out of this event. You know, we were kind of counting on Italo. We were hoping somebody was going to come around the corner to take that jersey off of Wilco, but nobody has yet. Nobody's going to take it from this one. Well, Wilco would be licking his chops. Exactly after seeing, my point. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> licking his chops because he has such a, a long, a huge lead going uh, into this event. Um, he's going to keep a huge lead. Yeah. Matty Wilco is going to take that uh, yellow jersey, fold it nicely, put an envelope, <laughs> pack it in the board bag for Fiji because uh, uh, he'll still be wearing it when we get to stop five. Uh, John John Florence, big topic of discussion here. There's been that uh, backwards and forwards with uh, Kaio Belli taking two losses before we got here to Rio de Janeiro. It was payback day for John John, Pete. And you, you would have thought um, John John would be angry about that in a John John type of way. I mean, that's the whole deal is, is that uh, John John doesn't really ever get totally angry. He's, uh, he's pretty mellow, but he would have been feeling that, those two losses, because they were tough losses as well. Well, you know what? John John lost those heats on his own account 
So John John knows that he's not mad at Kyle. No, no, he's just, just yeah, but he's upset at yeah. himself. Maybe you know the first one could have been questionable over at, at, at Bell's because I think that he you know served a really good heat. I, he was much more dynamic than Kyle yeah. was in that heat. Uh, and then when you you look at the heat where he lost it at Margaret's, yeah, he blew it. He yeah. he gave up a wave that you know he he was had priority and he knew that. So coming into this event, you know, he's surfing differently. He knows what he has to do to win heats. Now those were great mistakes that he learned from, and he said that in his post heat interview. And I love the fact that you know he's not just going out for a free surf anymore. He's going out to win heats. Yeah, and you could tell. You know, and that's the whole thing. You saw at the very end of the heat when he had priority, he did everything he could to shadow Kyle Belly, but Kyle making a move on a just crummy wave to actually get away, which was really smart of Kyle to do, to get away, get on the ski, and give himself an opportunity at the end of the heat. And of course, John John realizing that at the, that point and yeah. looking at the clock going, it's 1 minute 30 to go. I'm not going to be able to get over there. I'm now leaving it up to Kyle. And Kyle actually got away, but uh, it didn't end up being enough. Well, little, uh, Pete, spot on point there. A little bit of a technical uh, glitch from John John. Yeah, he got away with it, though. He did. For this, uh, to bring the exchanges between Kyle Belly down to 2 1. Here's that last uh, step like floater a, from him. It yeah. looked like a wave that was going to maybe give him the opportunity. I couldn't believe it at that point. Like, John John would have had a, it would have been a heart crushing blow to see him go down if uh, he'd lost that one. But he did. He's in. Kyle Belly will settle for the round five finisher. John John through to the quarterfinals. Those were the final numbers there on deck. And, uh, well, we like to see John John. He's going to be in the quarterfinals uh, possibly tomorrow. Davy Cathels, let's talk a little about him. He's been doing his own form of damage here. Uh, round three, great encounter. Buzzer beaters in both his round three and round five heats, gentlemen. Destiny's child. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he... Uh He's, he's having stuff fall in his place, and that's how sometimes events, things start to go your way, you know. And not only that, but his performance level was through the roof, too. I mean, he, he's carrying a lot of energy in his heats. He's not making huge mistakes, you know, and there's, uh, you know, he's putting himself and keeping himself in the heats uh, and then getting an opportunity at the end and executing. He's executing, you know, look, he, he's riding a, a board that's just a, a racetrack model. I mean, Mayhem makes boards for be beach breaks. He makes boards for these conditions. So that surfboard that he's riding is perfectly shaped probably for these conditions. And he's executing. You gotta always, of course, it's always about the Indian and not the arrow, but it's nice to have a good arrow. Oh, of course. You want it straight and pure, and he's got it. Absolutely. 2016, Davy Cathal's looking very sharp and informed. So sharp, in fact, he would uh, rewrite the script here and take Toledo out of the discussion here I mean, in Brazil. And on paper, we, we thought that, you know, here we are, defending champion. Uh, you know, and it came down to this air right here. Had he stomped, not this one, but the one that yeah. that uh, we saw from um, Felipe Toledo. You know, the barrel to air. This is it here. Had he stomped this air, it would have been a different story. Yeah. You know what? Nine times out of ten, he's gonna make it. He came yeah. down a little off kilter, and his foot slipped off. Caffles on right up behind him, slamming away at the lip. Are you kidding me? Just looking sharp, looking fast, and having fun. He had no idea that he won the heat when he came in. Yeah, was he classic. was baffled. And you know what? <laughs> I love it. Look at him right there. That's what I'm talking about. He's like, no Double way. Yeah. Shaka. I just love it. You know, this is what we come for. This is the kind of energy we love to see. Uh, you know, they're they're pushing limits out there in the lineup, doing you know above the lip surf. Surfing. Toledo had he stuck that maneuver, wouldn't have paddled down to the hotel and went in. Let me tell you, that's what he did. He didn't even come in. He went I mean, you look at, down uh, in the current, went straight in, went to his hotel room. You look at the quarterfinals that are almost set there. We've waiting on uh, one more athlete for uh, Gabriel Medina, but uh, you look at the year. There's only two surfers that have made the quarterfinals in that entire quarterfinal lineup. You know, even even with Michelle Perez and. Uh, um, can the check? Oh, there it is, right there on your screen. But the, yeah, it, it, those guys haven't been making it. It's a full-on mix-up. We don't even know how these rankings are going to fall oh, out. Yeah, at the John, end of this. John and DeSouza, they made it into the quarters um, over on the Gold Coast right off the bat. And the reality is, yeah, <laughs> none of these guys have been here for you know <laughs> the, the last two events. And, and it's great. They're probably all super psyched to be here. They're probably loving it. They're just diving in, and, and they're going to come out at full strength. I'm glad we're getting to see uh, Jack Freestone. We haven't seen him all year. He had a bad go over on the Goldie, then he got hurt, and now we're actually getting to see how good he is, how big he surfs, you know? I, I had no idea that he was going to be that good in his heats. And out here, over here in Brazil, I loved watching him. Big, long, extended turns, a lot of a lot of power, and he's got crazy technical game. Yeah, that's right. I mean, and the, the air part of it, too, that he's got that in his bag of tricks. He can pull it out on any section, just like a lot of the top guys can. And it's just now finally getting his opportunity to showcase that talent. Um, I can't wait to see what's going to happen tomorrow.
Big day uh, going to unfold tomorrow again, gentlemen. Any couple of little last thoughts? Uh, Jack Freestone is in one of those quarters. Uh, well, one more surfer to uh, match up against Medina. Who will it be? Melling or Perez? Well, Quickly. we'll find out tomorrow morning, bright and early, won't we? <laughs> Where's All right, team? stay with us. We'll be back here local time in Brazil, 7 o'clock tomorrow morning. What a day here in Rio de Janeiro. This copyrighted event broadcast is produced by the World Surf League for broadcast around the world and may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise distributed or used in any form without the written consent of the World Surf League. Well, Gia, good morning. Welcome back to Postinho. And there's some solid sets coming through. John John's on fire. Medina's doing rodeos. And we're looking forward to the start of the day. Let's now kick off round three, heat number one. Toledo, nice electric spark and a big squared up turn. Well, here we go, stall. And he'll mark that second turn. Good smash, and that's a good combination right there. We're coming out of the barrel of Gabriel Medina into a layback low tail to recover. Medina moving on to round four as we continue. Dusty Payne into the quarterfinals. Who's a confident display here? Pupo finally breaks through the final series here at the Hoy Rio Pro. Now going for a crazy oh. backside full rotation reverse from wow. Medina and a combination. Another perfect 10 for Gabriel Medina. Toledo, done and dusted. Davey Kettles is on his way to the quarterfinals. He doesn't even know. 